Hello. Yeah, we got a few minutes. So how's everybody doing today? Good. Pretty good. Is everybody keeping up with their block so far? I see Kathy's got all the first three in the background there. Yes, I do. Woohoo! Good job. Have you sewn the first row together? Are they all together or are they just sitting next to each other? They're all together. Oh, wonderful. That's what I did to mine too. <laughs> I noticed that in uh, block four or month four and month 12, they do the nine patch repeated yep. with two of the colors from, from month four. Can mm -hmm. we do like a strip set to? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> if you want to explain, could you explain you, how to do that? <laughs> yeah. If you want to, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. If you want to strip piece those go for it okay. i would say yeah like try some extra pieces but you would cut your yeah. strips you'd cut one set you'd have your um yellow piece cut at one and a half inches and i usually make mine a lot bigger than i really need to just in case i accidentally miscut or it's not perfect i usually make mine a lo lot longer than i need to so I'd cut it, you know, your one and cut a one and a half inch piece and you'll have two of those for your first piece. And then you'll put that white piece in the middle and then okay. cut it at. Um, so then this should measure three and a half inches when it's all when you have this piece sewn to this piece to this piece, it should measure three and a half inches across, then cut a one and a half inch strip. So then you'll have you'll cut, you'll need two of those. And then you'll have to do another one with two with the white followed by the yellow followed by the white. And you'll just need one, okay. one of those. That sounds but good. That's a lot easier than piecing individual squares together. <laughs> Cause you're gonna go, no, why am I doing <laughs> these tiny, teeny, tiny little pieces that I'm trying to get underneath strip piecing is a lot easier. It, less headache <laughs> and <laughs> it, he doesn't tell you to do that in the pattern but you should have either enough fabric from previous blocks that you could strip piece or even you have enough leftovers from this month when you're cutting it out yeah plus i bought the oops kit yes and <laughs> if you have that oops kit you might as well make it easier for yourself than trying to piece individual pieces because that's just a way to drive you batty. <laughs> and we don't want you to go batty. That's not fun. So that's one of the biggest things I wanted to talk about today was, you know, go ahead and strip piece that little tiny nine patch because you have four of them. So here's the full, here's my full completed block all nice and pretty. This one, I will say was, it came to, once I got all the cutting to get done, it came together very quickly. I was, it was a nice reprieve after some of the other blocks. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you get a nice easy one. So that's, that's kind of nice. We'll, we'll, we'll take an easy one here. So yeah, you have your four pieces that you'd want to do your strip for your little nine patches. 
Now, when we do on here, if you look at the um, pattern corrections from Banyan Batiks, they will say on page that that uh, page fourteen in your cutting sheet here, they'll tell you to cut out all eight of your background squares at four by four instead of the three by three. I don't agree and here's why. <laughs> if, because you need four that are at three and a half by three and a half. So why cut them again? So what I told everyone, all the, all everybody here is on your cutting diagram, wherever you had, um, it tells you in here, I don't have the cutting diagram on me right now. So I changed and I cut four of my background pieces to four by four. And that oh, was because, okay. let's see if she emailed or I did the, this is Bonnie Hartzell. She's looking for the, let's see, one second, ladies. I can forward it. What's hey, Bonnie, that? how about if I text you or are you, it, would you want it emailed or texted? What would be easier? What would be easier? Okay, okay. So if we already cut them at the four and a half by four and a half, do we have to redo them? I just forwarded it to you. Hi, Bonnie. I cut, okay, I'll be honest. I cut all of mine at three and a half by three and a half and had absolutely no problem. I had no problem. It was after somebody who had mentioned, oh, hey, by the way, did you know there was a cutting? Supposedly there's a cutting error in block four. And I'm like, oh, great. I just cut out everything already. I put it together, cutting all of my background squares, all of these. It's because we're making a half square triangle. We make one of each of those half square triangles and we're sewing them point to point. So we're only making one half square triangle as opposed to the two at a time. I think he's having you cut it out bigger in case you're not super accurate and you want a little extra to trim it up after you've sewn that half square triangle. But we did point to point triangles in one of the other blocks and he didn't tell us to cut them bigger. So I... <laughs> I'm confused. I cut it out exactly like the cutting diagram said. I had no issue. I would just be extra careful when you're sewing your half square triangles. Just make sure that you're sewing that point to point, trim that, trim your dog ear away and press it and you should be good. I didn't have any issue with that whatsoever. So, so that's the main, that's the first main block. And then after that, then it's just sewing these straight across in rows and sewing the rows together as a block. I did end up like pressing my rows together. When I pressed them, I pressed the seam open just so there wasn't a whole bunch of bulk and stuff. That's just what I did, especially when I got to that center seam here, I wanted it open so it wasn't so bulky. And since we're sewing them all together, I couldn't easily twirl my seams. So that one was, but this all, you know, that after you get done with, it's all just nice and straight sewing. So it's not anything that's overly complicated. We just have a lot of cutting to do, that's all. And then we have our last bit of Drunkard's Path, again, for one of our accent pieces. We have to make five of them. It's gonna be the exact same process that we had for block three. 
So if you want to applicate, applicate. If you want to do, if you want to piece it, I pieced mine. They're not going to, you're, it's going to, you're not going to have to line them up or anything. So if they're not perfect, no one's ever going to notice. So that, and then we go through and our last accent piece is paper pieced. So we get those nice, perfect little points. Now I will say, let me pull up the pattern here. So in your book, this is the paper pieced pattern that you will have to do. It's not a typical outline like most paper pieced patterns. So my suggestion is to kind of make a darker line along here when you make your copies so you can see your sewing line easier. Because <laughs> it's, when you're going through and you're sewing it, it's a little more difficult trying to see that sewing line. Has everybody here done some paper piecing, done a little bit before? I've done a demo before, yep. Bon Hi, Bonnie, you're, you're muted right now. <laughs> can you do one quick example? I can show a quick example. Let me grab that real quick. It's been a long time since I've done paper piecing. <laughs> Once you do it, you'll, you'll remember. Once you do it, it's not. Everybody seems to get a little... Ah, what am I doing? The first one I say is always the most difficult one. I like it because it looks, it eliminates any errors. <laughs> I know. So this is the one, this is just my example. This, it comes out, you get that nice crisp point. I will say once you, when you sew paper PC, make sure you turn your stitch length down to at least 1.5. Okay, 1.5, you wanna have your stitch length turned down. Let me go grab a quick piece of um, fabric real quick. Hi, Karen. How are you? Good, how about you? Good, I haven't Good. seen you in a while. I know, I, I, I've been working on my room, on my oh. sewing room, so. Fun. So yeah, it's unfortunate, but I actually get to go back and start sewing again tomorrow. <laughs> so I, I, it's been horrible just trying to get through it. Oh, well, at least it's done. Yeah, that, yeah is it is it now. I'm moving, I'm moving everything back in. Oh, okay. <laughs> so anyway, but I miss your face. I know. I haven't been out to the shop very much lately. You know how winter goes and it's a long drive, so. Why is it still snowing? Ah, it's terrible. Why is it still I don't know. snowing? I hear you. <laughs> yeah, I love that snow. It's just been yucky lately. Ugh. It's all right. sideways out here. <laughs> I know. I was driving in the, to come in to the shop to do this, and I'm like, it's snowing again. Knock it off. <laughs> Stop. I don't want any more snow. I'm ready. How much to... snow are you getting? Uh, it's just trace amounts, but still it's snowy. <laughs> and it's April. Yes. <laughs> and the wind is blowing. And then the sun comes out and teases us. And then it snows again. And yep. then it snows again. And then you're just like, why? Why am I? Why is it doing this? I'm going to come over to the cutting table here. Okay, so for paper PC, the add a quarter ruler is my favorite friend. I absolutely love this bugger. I couldn't do paper piecing without it. So it has this thin tapered line. This is gonna come in handy when we're folding our paper. So I have my, my fabric right side, nice and you know, I have my paper pattern. I'm going to be sewing on this side. So the first piece, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to put my fabric so I can see it. 
and I make sure that it covers the whole thing. So it's just like that. You can put a dab of glue down. You could pin this just to help hold it in place. Once I have that, then I'm going to take and I'm going, so this is piece number one. So I call paper piecing, it's sewing by numbers. So this is piece number one. So we're good there. But now we need to add piece number two here. So what I do is I'm going to take this add a quarter ruler and I'm going to lay it right here on that line. And then I'm going to fold back my paper so I have a nice fold line and I see all this extra fabric. So with the add a quarter, so once I have that folded, it's looking just like this. Now I'm going to take the other side. See how it has that ridge there? I'm going to bump that. I'm just going to show you right here what it does. This, I bump my, my paper right up to that ridge and then any fabric, oops. any fabric now that is hanging over here, is going to get whacked off and that's going to give me my quarter inch seam allowance to then take the three inch by six inch piece and I can just lay that piece right on top. So if I go ahead. Is this all before you've sewn it down? What? Yes, is, is this, this is I, I, I cut my seam allowance before I sew anything down. Okay. That way, my piece that my next piece that I'm going to. So I've got that cut. So now I have this little line above my fabric. So I'm going to unfold my paper like this. And I take whatever piece that I have. So I have that. Now I'm going to take my fabric and it's going to be right sides together, just like we normally would. And I'm going to line up. And this piece isn't big enough, but I'm going to line up my edges right like that. Flip it over. And then I'm just going to sew from point to point. And then you okay. fold it. So then once you have that sewn, so it'll be this one. So then it's all sewn. This one doesn't have the paper in it, but then it's all sewn and then you flip. And I will just use, you can either use a seam roller or I'll just use my iron, but not any steam since I have paper just to give it a quick press. And then we do the same step all over again. So once I have this side sewn, then I'm going to take and I'm going to fold my paper back. On the next line. So I'll fold it back like that. Take my ruler again, butt it up. And then I'm going to trim again. Okay. And the nice thing about this is this one is a nice, easy warm up because month eight, almost the entire center is paper pieced. Just a forewarning. So and this is a nice, easy. this is a good warm up if you can't, if you're unfamiliar with paper piecing or it's been a while since you've paper pieced, this is a good warm up for that block. Okay. Um, I when would, I when I paper piece, when um, Jess, where you have the fold yep. and you make, I end up using, um, when I took a class with Carol Dokes, she mm -hmm. uh, uses um, 
um, freezer paper uh, index card mm, when she yeah. makes that fold is there a big difference because i think the is the ruler a little rounded at that end or is it a flat end it's a i don't have that one it tapers at the end so it's nice and flat right on the other side okay so, so it's it is just flat. like a yeah it's just like a point like you would if you had an index card so it's nice and flat and carol, that way carol, I was, just, carol i took carol's too and it's a little different but the basics are the same the you basics know? are the same yeah you use postcards or index cards or whatever so yep and then once you fold it back then i always yeah i cut my edge so i don't have to worry about which one was it? this one so i have that edge gone so then i have my seam my seam allowance and then i just bring my next piece of fabric and just line it right up. And then you're just gonna, it's essentially dot to dot sewing. Okay. And what we'll, I will sew. Now, when I start on the first part, I like to start like one or two stitches just before my actual line. And then for this one, I'm gonna come closer to the edge because there's, otherwise you're gonna end up you might not see how it has that little flap there. You want to bring it a little longer so it doesn't, um, you don't end up with that little flap because you don't want to accidentally not have enough sewn. So then that seam is going to pop loose. So I usually just go over a little bit. Question, are we supposed to pull the papers or leave the papers in now? You could probably, once got your, once you have these units made I actually pulled all the paper and then sewed them together these once it's in this form it's very it's pretty stable I didn't right. have any I didn't have any problem sewing it yeah. if you wanted to sew that whole line together with the paper on you could do so but I would just take the paper out once it's all sewn together okay okay now, are Some, you using you foundation do. paper what are you using foundation paper? I'm using foundation paper. Okay. Yep. So it's thinner than regular copy paper. It makes your life a lot easier. <laughs> so it's not as thick. Because the, the potential, because when I first started paper piecing, I was paper, paper piecing on just, I just had copy paper and I was printing it out on copy paper. Well, when you're taking that paper out, your stitches can get loose then. So you want to use kind of like that this is the news this is carol dopes foundation paper yeah it's a lot thinner plus it tears so much easier that's why you make sure you turn your stitch length down because then it'll just tear right off without hardly having to do anything at all which makes your life easier the right tools make your life easier and that's what we're all about yeah is there any other questions? No. June Taylor also makes paper piecing paper. Mm, okay. And it's the same as jokes, I'm sure. But I'm yeah, I'm sure most of them are. There's all. Martindale. But you there's, get, there's a lot of people who make the foundation. And you can get papers. it. You can get J June Taylor's from Joanne Fabrics. So. There, yeah, there's all sorts of different papers. So find one that's works. I like this one. It doesn't have any coating. So your fabric tends to, it will stick to your paper. That's another reason why you don't want to use copy paper because it has a coating, a little bit of coating and it slips and slides all over the place. This, it just holds really nicely. Even without glue on here, it holds nicely. So, but this block I thought was a nice, it's a nice, easy one. Next month will be lots of piecing. <laughs> so this one, this one's a nice, you know, breather. You get a little break with some easier piecing, which is nice. Yeah, Anybody since have I have to play catch up. That's a, that's a good thing. You got to play catch up. <laughs> I'm, 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 I don't have last month's block because we moved everything out of my room and oh. I had no sewing machine. So, so I've got two months that I've got to do now. You got two months. Yeah. 
this month and last month. So well, you should be able to catch up, no problem. Oh yeah, yeah. Those aren't that, that one. And this one, I swear, the cutting takes longer than the sewing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Oh, beautiful! Ooh. Beautiful. Very pretty. There you go. Yeah. Now we can hear you. Yeah, it worked out so well. It really did. Perfect. Yep. That looks so yep. nice. It probably turned out the best out of all my 12, 12 and a half by 12 and a half blocks. Nice. So. Gives you that little boost of, hey, I, can, I, I know how to do this. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and, like, and as I said the other day, I cut strips and did that nine patch. I yep, did yep. not use. Oh yeah. Single. Yeah. That we talked about that. Use and don't, if you don't have to do individual pieces, strip, you know, cut your, cut some one and a half inch strips, yep. piece them together and then cut, cut that cut it to one and a half and then sew them together. You'll be yep. so much happier. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a mini piecer. You don't like doing like little mini one, one inch. I, I, I was trying to do one inch blocks the other, like a couple of years ago with one inch pieces. Yeah. Those are a little, those are, those are insane. <laughs> yeah. The block, I was doing a 16 patch and it ended up being like two and a half inch big. That was, that was the nuts. I decided yep. one and a half inch is the smallest I'll go. Right. Right. I, when I was going through the stuff to put back in my room, I found a box of it from a workshop that I had taken, oh, a long time ago. The guy's name was George Siciliano. And they were paper piece, little blocks, little foundation. They were probably this big and they had 20 pieces of fabric in them. Oh my goodness. And I was like, oh my God. Well, I think maybe this, I, I don't know. Is this going to go to Goodwill? Maybe this will go to Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe that'll be, I, I don't know if I want to do that one. So I made a lot of them, but I don't know that I want to do that anymore. <laughs> you don't want to do little, little piecing anymore. Yeah. yeah. Give me, give me big stuff. I can accomplish it, but much faster. So but it was the very best, pretty. The best thing about the paper piecing is you get perfect points all the time. Yeah. I know you yeah. do. You know, you're not, you're not struggling to do it on your own. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because who wants to do that? So, all right. Well, this one, like in store, was pretty, uh, pretty quick and simple. So, does anybody else have any questions that they have? No. Thank you very no. much. Thank You're you. welcome. Yeah. Have, have a happy Easter. You all have, have a happy Easter happy, as yeah, well. Happy Easter, everybody. Thank yeah. Easter. Thank you. Yep. We'll see bye you bye. next month. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.